What's up guys? Good morning to you. Hope you're having a great weekend. Looks like we got uh, London, England here. Lower Michigan. Thanks for being here. It's super cold here in Salt Lake City this morning. It's about 40 degrees. Now somebody give me a shout out if you can hear me okay. It shows that the volume's all right. Looks like we got a few people on here. Uh, Basically what we're gonna do is we are gonna practice some gold leafing. Um, I'm not a pro with this. Uh, I've been doing it for about, well, I've been attempting it for, a, for about 15 years. I've been custom painting for about 20 years. But uh, it's, in my personal opinion, it's the hardest custom paint technique to learn. It, no doubt, that's, that, that's my personal opinion, but, um, it's, it's not easy. I mean, you can do it, but it depends on how, how you want it to look when it's done. Like, I'm, I'm selling this stuff for, you know, I'm, I'm painting Harley parts. They expect it to be, you know, next to flawless. And that's sometimes not an easy thing to do when you're, when you're in gold leafing. Um, there's a lot of, I, I've been learning a lot of tricks on how to fix stuff. Um, basically, I've been leafing. I've been trying to leaf almost every day to practice for the last two months. Uh, but I've been involved in, in getting to learn how to leaf and decided to commit to learn how to leaf because really because I want to teach you guys. Um, but I also want to grow my own skill and it's like one of those things where I've always tried it but uh, I've just kind of given up every time because the results, the results just weren't the quality of, um, of what I liked, what I like my quality to be. But I can, I'm here to say that uh, I found a few different things, a few different tricks that uh, I really like that's helped me along the way. But if you guys have been struggling with gold leafing, sil silver leafing, or anything like that, let me know in the comments. Let me know how long you've been trying, uh, how long you've been painting. Let's hear how long you guys have been painting. And, uh, but yeah, tough thing to do. So right now I'm just using some eighth inch fine line by lime line tape and I'm just gonna, going to uh, tape out the this edging this edge of this Tamco bomb I have here I had this laying around and I figured this is a, this is a good practice piece it looks like Riddle painted this down uh, I think I got this at the Tamco takeover so yeah that's, so I figured that's perfect you know I'll I'll use that and uh, can practice a little bit more, but grab my other. So you can see here's one of my panels. I got many of panels like this, but I've been, uh, I've been using different leafs. I've been using different glues. Um, I've been spinning with a drill. I've been spinning by hand. I've been using 3000 grit to spin. I've been using 5000 grit to spin. Um, I've tried to towel with my thumb. A lot of different techniques in order to, to, I mean, people are using, there's a lot of different ways to do the same thing is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but uh, I'm trying to narrow it down to what's easiest for me and what's easiest for somebody that's, that's new. But you can see that, uh, you know, some of these I kind of scotch bright it off. But uh, um, this, uh, I actually have another panel somewhere around here. I think it's in the booth in clear coat that uh, it has a lot more that are, that are finished that, you know, basically I try, you know, I also try techniques where I put too much glue down. You can see right here where it's just too much glue and it didn't spin as well. I tried different leaves. So this leaf right here didn't even spin. Like literally didn't even spin. This stuff spins great. This stuff didn't spin that great. Uh, this didn't spin at all. So not all leaf is the same. I've kind of found the one I like so far. So I'm uh, both the gold and the silver leaf I found out of testing about I think 15 different leaves or more that uh, that you know this leaf seems to lay out and spin and doesn't break as as easy. All right, so I got that taped out, and uh, I'll just go ahead and mask this up right now because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be spraying down the uh, the sizing glue. So traditionally, what you would do is you would you know lay it out with a brush, you know. Um, I don't even know if I have any traditional 
sizing glue here. But basically, if, if, if I remember right, it's like an oil-based glue that uh, you'd brush down and then you'd wait like 30 minutes and then you'd do the knuckle test to where, see if it squeaked. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with that whole technique, but uh, this is gonna be a little different. I've, I've tried some sprayable stuff that I'm still testing. Um, that should be available maybe next month, but uh, definitely by uh, early next year. But let's get to it. I'm gonna, going to uh, tape mass this up so we don't get any overspray of the sizing glue. Ohio, Texas, Canada. This is, no, this is not another rocket ship. This is a real rocket ship, actually. So once again, this is not gonna be perfect. This is just a practice piece that we're doing. And uh, if you're still learning, you should do a lot of these. But I mean, this thing has, as far as I know, this thing has been powder coated with white powder coat. But there's a lot of little imperfections here. It looks like there's something got underneath the powder coat here. There's like a little edge right there. Um, I'm feeling a little texture there. Seems like the whole edge kind of has a texture. So if I wanted this to be perfect, I would wanna make sure that my surface is completely smooth and clean which it's not, which right here, it's pretty bad. So we're gonna be able to see how that gold leaf um, is affected by spinning over that, that texture right there. Maybe it won't be, I don't know, we'll find out. Like I said, I'm still, I'm still like three or four months into this whole thing. I feel like I'm getting a lot better. I'm getting a lot more confidence. And like I said, I've been doing this for 20 years and uh, finally told myself that I was going to uh, learn it, you know. All right. All right, that should be good enough. Let me trim this section right here. Tennessee, South Africa, Ireland, Florida, Ohio. Thanks for being here, guys. Finland, wow, it's incredible. And you're all interested in custom paint, that's awesome. All right, so we got that, uh, that all taped out. That's good enough. I'm not gonna overspray into that, I don't think. If you're new and you're kind of all like up way up here, you're gonna wanna mask this all out. I'm just gonna clean that up a little bit. Put a couple more pieces down here. I changed my mind. I'm gonna do a little bit more right here. All right, Riddle, hopefully I don't pull off your, is that who painted Riddle? Yeah, so hopefully I don't pull off your pinstripe right there. All right, let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna load up my airbrush. It's clean, clean. Like I said, there's a couple things in there. Um, I am using a sprayable sizing glue. Now, this isn't available yet. Um, hopefully next month, for sure, the end of the year. It's still going through product testing. Um, I've been clearing this stuff over and over again every day. We've been putting it out in the sun. We've been putting it on too thick. We've been putting it on too thin. We've been spinning it too hard. We just, we are making all the mistakes 
and uh, you know, trying to fine tune what, what's so tough to learn. Um, but uh, I feel like I'm gonna, I think we're gonna make it pretty easy here. So uh, like I said, this is, this is still just practice, may not turn out perfect, but uh, we'll see. We'll learn together if anything. All right, I'm gonna shake this bottle up. The nice thing, it, it does have a uh, pearlescent in it. Um, the, so when it dries, it does kind of, uh, you can kind of see when the dry. So the dry times are faster. Uh, we're not gonna be here for uh, all day waiting for this glue to dry because we're gonna put it on light and we're gonna do a few coats. So I'm using a uh, Iwata Eclipse. This is my Eclipse. It has a 0 .50 tip in it, and that's what I would probably recommend. Um, it's, uh, yeah, do the, yeah, I'd, I would say if you, have the, if you have the smaller needle, I think you're going to be fine. But uh, you can also spray this out with a gun as well. But uh, I'm still testing that out some more. We'll find that out for sure. But the initial test is, yeah, you can spray this out with a mini gun or a regular gun as long as you're turning up your pressure. And uh, the sizing glue goes on even. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and fill that up halfway in my airbrush. And then I like to thin it out just a little bit. This stuff can be thinned out 20% with uh, regular water. So I'm just gonna take some bottled water here and just thin it out just a little bit more. This is gonna make it spray out of the airbrush better. Um, if you're using a smaller tipped airbrush, you're gonna to wanna to thin it out even a little bit more so that way it's spraying out smoothly. You don't want it to, to be splotchy or anything like that. So I'm gonna shake this up in my airbrush a little bit. Okay, so we got it loaded up. Sprayable sizing glue. This is water-based, so as you can tell, I mixed it with water. So it is water-based, it cleans up with water. Um, it works pretty good. I'm gonna lay down some masking paper right here so when I spray this, I'm not gonna get a bunch of dust blowing up all over. You need to be really careful. You wanna keep your area clean. Um, any kind of like dust or uh, eyelash or anything is going to, it's gonna show up in your leaf. So if you're doing this in your garage, just do it in the cleanest portion of your garage. Just clean up your workbench, lay down, you know, lay down some masking paper like this. Let's see. All right. Got it all loaded up here. We had any questions? Let me check this over. Some of you in Ogden, right on. I'm just outside of Ogden, California. When you're doing gold flake, do you ever get bubbles underneath the flake sheet? Um, yeah, if you have contaminants, yes. Southern California, right on. The sizing gonna be Limeline brand? Yes, the sizing is gonna be Limeline. Okay. All right, I'm glad you guys are here. Stick with me here. Uh, oh yeah, there's also the discount code to the Limeline Big Cartel website, which has the tape, has a bunch of other stuff, the metal flake and all the stuff that I use. Time Warp 1, the number one, is, uh, is gonna be the discount code for 20% off. So that's still going from our live the other day. I'll have all the, that all linked down in the description too. So, All right, so I'm gonna pick a spot to start, which I'll probably start right there. You know, that, no reason to start in the middle. I'll start right here. Okay. Now, the one thing to remember when, uh, when spraying this uh, particular, when spraying out sizing glue, especially water bases, if you spray too much, it wants to gather up and collect into and make kind of a texture. Um, you don't want that. And the reason why you don't want that is from earlier, 
you can see right here, and maybe hopefully you can see that, but this line right here was uh, oversaturated with glue. Here, this is a better example right here. It was over it was uh, oversaturated with with the uh, the glue and causes um, little marks like that. But I really pounded that stuff on, you know. I really want to see how how far that we can take it where it ruins it, you know, which is not, it's really, <laughs> there's a lot of variables that can screw it up. But uh, I feel like we're making some progress here. All right. So I'm staying away about, uh, I'm gonna let that drip on there. That's happened before. So I'm staying about six inches away or so, trying to make sure that the, the pattern covers the whole area instead of getting up close and trying to fill it in like you would normally airbrush. So I'm gonna stay back and about six inches and I'm just gonna lightly dust back up here to build that up and come around and we're gonna let that tack off. Okay, I feel like I did that pretty even. Um, you can also take it and look into the sunlight. Let me get a better angle at it. Might as well flip this light on there too. Hopefully that can, you guys can see better with that. But yeah, so if you look at it at an angle, you can see uh, when it flashes off. So right here where I first, where I ended up at, it's still a little bit glossy, kind of like what you would see when you look at base coat or anything else that dries and flashes off. It also has a little bit of a pearlescent to it, um, which uh, kind of helps as far as seeing when it's dry because when it dries, the, the pearl kind of goes away. So there's like a purple pink kind of a hue that uh, we put in there that allows you to kind of gives you a little bit more of a visual of when the sizing glue is ready for another coat or if it's ready for the leafing to be applied. But yeah, still a little wet around up in here. I'll check out the question. You guys have questions? Let's hear them. Uh, I'm here to help you. A soft sponge roller needed for a better finish. Yep, not sure what that meant. What's the working time with the glue? Um, that's one of the things that we're still trying to narrow down. Um, it depends on how you spray it. If, if, you, if it's sprayed real thick, the, the working time's a lot longer. Um, but uh, what I've been doing, I've been doing three light coats. Uh, and once it flashes off, it, it basically it's ready to apply. Um, I have tested it and waited um, a little bit longer, but I feel like I still need to push it past it. Right now, if I was to guess, and this is just a guess, I would say about 10 minutes or so to, uh, to get on it, or it might dry too much for the leaf to even stick to it. So hopefully that answers your question. What pressure you, you spray at? Um, let's see, what is this at right here? Let me. I'm like at 18 or 20. You want to be up a little bit higher. You don't want to spray it too slow because you don't want to put too much texture on there. That's really what we're trying to prevent. We want the glue to go on smooth, um, like nothing's been applied. You know, it's just as smooth as what the surface is we applied to. And then if, if there's anything you guys missed on this or if you, you came in late, you can rewatch this when it's all done. It'll be, it'll be there on my, on my YouTube. Okay, looks like, looks like it's ready for another coat. It's that quick. So 
So we'll start off the same spot. The second coat, I'm just a little bit more aggressive with it because it has, it already has a, a little bit of a glue layer to be able to attach to. That way it's not, it's not going on a flat surface where it's trying to find, you know, usually when something's real wet and it lands and it's too wet, it tries to find, you know, it's its own little spot. It, once there's a, a nice layer of glue, like the first coat we did, it pretty much lands and sticks. And once again, just looking at an angle and see if there's any areas that you may have been a little light. Pearl essence will tell you if you if you have really heavy areas, it'll get really a lot of pearl there. That's just uh, an indicator. Say so yeah, maybe not put too much more in that spot. Okay, I'm just gonna check the. So right here, you'll start to feel it's starting to get tacky. The first coat, not too tacky. We're starting to get attacked to it here. Okay, yep, still a little wet. We'll give that a minute to dry. We'll talk a little bit about the leafing. Somebody said, wear your mask, esophageal cancer. This is water-based stuff right here. And it's really not putting out a fume, so. Yep, but you're right. You're working with chemicals. Make sure you're wearing a mask. Okay, here's a couple of the different leaves that I've been testing. Um, see, here's the a little bit darker gold that didn't work out quite as well. But uh, I found, and I'm pretty sure this is the stuff, I found that this stuff works the best. Um, out of all the stuff I've tried, but well, there's kind of a peek at it. Six by six sheets. But once again, I just test the, the tape that's around it. Kind of use that as a way to decide um, if it needs more or if it's how dry and tacky it is. Usually, traditionally, you would brush it out in as far as I know, one coat with sizing glue, and then you would wait for it to dry, and then you would run your knuckle on it to see the squeak, or hear the squeak. But uh, yeah, that's that way. This is a little bit different. I usually test it by either touching it and seeing if it strings up, it's never, it's not ready for sure. And then you probably put it on too thick. So it should never really ever string up. Um, the, the key really uh, that I'm finding out is to watch for the flash and watch for that pearl to go away. So somebody asked, do you need to use an adhesion promoter to clear over the leafing? Uh, no, I don't think so. I've, I haven't done that and we've tested a lot of stuff and uh, we sanded through into the leafing to see what that would do. We checked the adhesion there. Um, so I'd say no. Fairway, yeah, hey, what's up brother? You should be getting your stuff here pretty soon. I'm excited for you to get it. Um, the materials are gonna be linked down in the description. So most of the stuff you can get on Amazon. Uh, the leafing, unfortunately all the leafing stuff is not available yet, but will most likely be available next month. But for sure by January we'll have this, the sprayable sizing glue that I'm using here. Um, but uh, on the Amazon link and also the big cartel, you'll find all the tape, um, all the metal flake, everything you need there for a lot of the stuff that I use. And then you can use that discount code at checkout, time warp one. The, the, the number one, and that's going to get you 20% off. But uh, yeah, thanks for mentioning that. That's 20% uh, off. That'll help out a lot, I'm sure. And that's going to run uh, for at least a few more days now.
All right, so it looks like this is already flashed off. I'm looking at, at, at an angle to see, you know, is it, is it glossy and has the, the pearl kind of gone away. If this was a black base coat that we put this over, the pearl actually would show up a lot more. I, you'd probably even be able to see it, but uh, on the white, it just doesn't have quite the impact, but you can still see when you get it too wet, um, kind of tells you the problems and gives you a visual guide a little bit. All right, last coat, last coat of sizing. And if you feel like you didn't put enough on one of the coats, you can always do another coat. I think I just ran out, let's check it out. Nope, the tip just got clogged a little bit. You wanna make sure that's spraying out nice and smooth. If it's spraying out sideways, or if it's spraying out kind of funky splat, don't do it. Just don't do it, clean your airbrush. It's not worth it. Make sure that your, your tool is functioning properly. And that looks great right there. I had just a little bit of glue dried up at the tip. They got it a little wet right there, not too bad. You really don't need much. You're not, you're not really piling it on there. And obviously the thinner you spray it, the less you have to wait. I mean, some sizing glue, I swear I had to wait like 45 minutes. But this is starting to flatten out right now. Like I said, the key is to really to get it on smooth. So it, it dries uh, to a smooth layer. So when the leaf lands on it, um, it doesn't create like a, a bunch of texture. Like if, say like your airbrush was spraying all splattered. Well, yeah, there'd be glue on there, but it's not laid out even. So when the, the leaf is so thin that when it presses on there, you'll be able to see the, uh, where the glue has kind of like globbed up, I guess. But uh, yeah, thin coats. And then test it with your finger on the masking. Kind of here. And then once again, you just check to see, to see that it's flashed off all the way. Looks like it needs a little bit more to go right there. And I did go a little heavy right there. So we'll see, that's gonna be fine. All right, we're just about ready. Let's give that about another minute or two to flash off and we'll look at it again. New Jersey in the house, what's up, man? Working on a custom water bottle, right on guys. I'm glad I can help you. Yeah, you guys have any questions, fire away. Any uh, content you want us, me to, to make, let me know. I know I'll be doing, somebody mentioned the mutant crystals the other day, which uh, it's a cool effect, man. I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna do it. I have never done it. I've actually never done it personally, um, and I haven't done a, a YouTube or anything. Can you brush it on with a paintbrush? You, uh, no. I would say that this is, this is sprayable only. I haven't tested if it can be applied with a paintbrush, but I would say no. Can you cut the leafing in strips for better, better handling? Yeah, that's actually a great idea. Man, that's a fantastic idea. Okay, hold up, I'm gonna go, I actually got a cutter over there. I'm gonna cut some of this. Let's see how it works. Let's 
see here. All right. Yep, it worked. Good idea. Yeah, it worked great. Thanks for that idea, actually. Never really thought of that. I kind of did mess up a few sheets walking it over here, being all not careful. All right. Take one last look at it. Let me look at that. Still a little wet right here. I'm going to go ahead and start right there, though.
What's up, guys? I think I lost the audio connection there for a minute, but I'm still going at it. Look at that, see? <clears throat> see, there's a little bit of debris in there from the powder coat. And you can see where that was because the base coat, powder coat, wasn't, um, wasn't exactly smooth. So we're all right. This, like I said, this is just a test. And uh, okay, so I am trying. This is the first time I'm gonna try this roller, so we'll see how it goes. Um, the roller I got, testing out. Uh, Goosh, Gooch gave me this idea about using one of these rollers to press this down, so I'm um, guessing this is what you do. I would imagine that you would uh, kind of hit the edges to make sure that those are... I think about getting a smaller one, but uh, they have ones that are one inch as well. And I'm just going to roll this out and try to get it pressed down really good. Seems to be working really good. Like I said, it's the first time I've used this tool. Yeah, I can definitely see the advantage of using this because, man, it really does get those edges down. Probably make for a way better spin as well because the better you have it stuck, you know, the, the less I guess it would rip. I mean, that's, that's like one of the, the main problems with leafing is, is it the tearing and ripping when you go to spin it over this one more time, make sure these edges are down good. Take our time and do it right. I like this thing. All right. Uh, so I'm going to grab a, here we go, piece of cotton. You can use a brush, a soft brush, or a lot of things you can use. All right. So uh, I'm just going to kind of you see these areas right here? So not, it's not going to come off of where we glued on the tape. So what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of come back and forth. Nothing too crazy. Make sure your fingernail or nothing doesn't hit it and tear it. But we're just making where, the, uh, where they overlapped. Just kind of smoothing that out. And it's almost kind of like burnishing it. It uh, kind of makes it blend into itself. So I like to do this quite a bit just to kind of give it all a uniform look. You can see right here where it got a little wrinkled up, but we'll see what that does. I probably should have been a little more careful about how I was laying that down. In fact, I saw it wrinkled before I even laid it down, so I shouldn't even have done that. But you know, you live and learn. You know, that's what you, you, you learn from your mistakes. Like I said, I'm still fairly new at this. I'm hoping to be able to master it sometime soon.
but yeah, you can see where that kind of makes it look like one continuous piece. It's looking good. Just real light, just kind of skim the surface. There we go. It's Don't press too hard. You really don't want, you can catch an edge and then put a little scratch in it. You don't want that either. You've done all this work to this point. You just really want to be delicate with it. All right, that's looking pretty good. All right. Okay, I like that. So uh, some people, we're going to get ready to spin it here. Um, if you haven't, if you're just barely jumping on, what we've done is we've uh, laid out some fine line tape around this, uh, this metal cutout here. We sprayed out some lime line, uh, sprayable sizing glue which makes it really easy to keep it even you don't have all those uh, dry times and stuff like that and i feel like it's just easier to use um tried the other way just couldn't couldn't get it to where i was happy with it but uh like i said still learning and i think we're ready to pull some tape right now so some people would choose to to spin all with the uh, with the tape on, but uh, I feel like I feel like if it's bigger than what the turn is, what the radius of this is, then there's a little bit of height difference, and I don't think you get as good of a turn. But maybe maybe I'm wrong, but I'm gonna pull my tape. I like to pull it right back on itself. That way it has a nice, tries to get a crisp line there. Looks like I missed that corner a little bit. It's all right. Yeah, usually these things are gonna have to be pinstriped. It's not very often you don't see a pinstripe around leafy and I've seen it a couple of times where people have got it straight enough. Once we wipe that down, that probably will be straight enough. We could even patch that little area right there where we missed. In fact, let me go ahead and do that right now. There we go. There was just that edge that we didn't press down. I kind of filled it, kind of fixed it right there. Okay. One of my, hey, thanks, Jeffrey. One of my favorite channels, I appreciate that. Get the edges smoother when using a cotton ball. Yeah, I used a cotton ball. I'll do that again, though. I think that's what you're saying. Once I pull this tape, I'll go ahead and rub the cotton again. But once again, pulling it back on itself seems to work the best. All right, bring our cotton back. Blend in that line. Get those little edges smoothed out.
Oh yeah, that's looking good. We're getting ready to spin this here. <sighs> All right. Yeah, I might actually just run the roller across it one more time. I don't know, like I said, I've never used this thing before, but let's do it. I'm actually pressing pretty hard right now, which is surprising. I love this tool. First time I used it, I think I love it. Oh yeah, look at that. See that problem we had right there? That was a, where it was a little wrinkle where I shouldn't have and I laid it down. I was like, oh, this piece is crap. Why? <laughs> and then I stuck it. How did I do that? But man, this thing is really clearing that up. I like it. Man, it's really giving it a nice, yeah, so any blemishes, like creases and stuff. And I think since I, uh, since I pulled the tape off, the ledge isn't there, so I'm really giving, getting a good press on this. I could even go back and maybe, it looks like I got a little, could use a little bit of a leaf there to patch that in, but I'm not going to worry too much. This is going to have a airbrush pinstripe on it anyways. If I want, we'll see, it's just practice. But yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad I was introduced to these rollers. That looks great. All right, that looks good. I'm glad I did that. I think we all learned something there. Or maybe somebody already knew. Okay, okay. We we're, we're ready to spin. I think that's what a lot of you guys are even here for. Is the how to get the spin down right. How do you how do you spin it? without breaking it. I did notice right here, kind of overlapped and I didn't get it all the way off. Let's see. Yeah, that looks better. You know, and even if I, if this was a customer's project, I'd probably burnish that some more with that cotton and just try to get it as even as smooth as possible. Cause if we can, if we can, uh, Get another spot right there. Let me just take care of that. It's where the, the leaf overlaps the other leaf. There was just a little hanger off the end. It wasn't a clean edge. Looks like there's a problem underneath the, like we were, like we were looking at earlier. We had some, some issues with that base coat. Okay, so spinning tool. Um, this is made by Spunleaf. And I'll go ahead and put their, uh, when this is all said and done, I'll go ahead and put their, all of their uh, website and information down in the description. But yeah, I did buy this little kit from them. Comes with the midsize, the big size, and a little guy. So if like you're doing little pinstripes, I haven't, I've yet to use this one, excuse me, I've yet to use this one, but I really want to. I probably should have just did a little pinstripe right here and we could have. Next, next time I'm gonna use that. But it also comes with 5,000 grit that are already pre-cut and 3,000 grit. That's what I'm using here. Yeah, 3,000 grit. I'm gonna use this size because it seems like that fits better than you know, what that does and obviously that small one doesn't work. The other thing is you can see that it's not quite in the center there. Let's put that in the center a little more. This is basically just the Trizac 3000 grit that's cut by 3M. And then there's this uh, little pressure rubberized piece that really helps. Like if you try to spin this without that, it, you just rip it to hell. It's, it's, but this, that's, I think that's the difference right there. All right. 
So we'll go ahead and start the same place we've been starting the whole time. Anybody have any questions so far? Hit the like button. Joseph, thanks for reminding me. Hey guys, hit the like button. Let's get a few likes on here. Shows YouTube that you guys actually like my stuff. You know, it's not enough that you're here. You have to hit the like button. So I appreciate that. I, you know, I really do. Let's do it. So basically I'm just doing a quarter turn. Let's see how this looks. Oh yeah, that looks really good. You can probably push a little harder. Let's try that again. Yeah, okay, okay. And then I'm gonna, I'm just gonna overlap it just a little bit, trying to keep it as even as possible. So I'm gonna lay it down right there. Give it a quarter a turn. And there's the spin. Drop, quarter turn, lift. And the nice thing is, is um, this isn't uh, like you can go back and spin it again. It's not like it's one and done. But just try to keep it even. Hopefully you guys can see that and see if it's spinning. That looks all right. Once again, you gotta, once you hit it in the, the right angle, man, it just looks brilliant. And we're not expecting this to be perfect. See right there? I didn't get all the, the overlap off. Where the two, they kind of meet in between. Yeah, there was quite a bit there that was kind of laying over the top. There you go. So far, so good. We're not tearing it anywhere. Well, it is getting into this spot where, where we had an edge right there, the powder coat. I mean, since we didn't have the base coat all the way smooth, you can see where it's, where we had the problem area. So if you have like uh, some hair or anything that got in there um, and it's not completely smooth, it's going to show in your leafing. So if you were gonna put an, an edge, a pinstripe on that, that's fine. I mean, usually you wouldn't pinstripe in that far, but just let it be known that you, you really have to start with a perfect, um, a perfect panel, a perfect substrate in order to, to make this stuff work. Also, you can do this with a drill. A lot of people do it with the drill. Some people have better luck with the drill, actually, because because it um, kind of polishes it up. I guess they have it at a higher RPM, and, it, and when they hit it, it kind of polishes a little bit. I tried it. In fact, if I had my drill, I would do it. It just doesn't. It just doesn't work out for me. I like the control you have, with just using your fingers and a quarter turn. Just overlapping just a little bit.
a little problem there too. We kind of missed a little bit of there as well. A little wipe. All right. So like I said, I'll probably go back and spin this again. Just line it up once again and hit it again before it's ready for clear. But really, you can spin it at any time. Let's give it a little dusting here. All right, that looks pretty good. I really like the roller that we used. I thought that that worked really well. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of errors. I did, I probably should have where some of my overlaps were. Um, I didn't get it cleaned off all the way, so it looks a little weird. Uh, once again, I'm still learning at this. I feel like, I feel like another month or so, I may have something a little more mastered than what I have now. Uh, but let's get a closer look at this. I'm going to move you around here, so hopefully you took your drama mean. But uh, like I said earlier, if you were to look, let's see if this switches into micro mode. Nope, it don't. It don't have a micro mode on this, but... Um, as you can see right here, there uh, was some issues. Let's see if we can see it. Okay, there we go. Where the, uh, the base coat wasn't all the way smooth. That's where the powder coat kind of beaded up. So if you have problems like that, they're going to show through. You know, They're definitely going to show through. So just to recap, a couple of things that we used. We used uh, a sprayable sizing glue from LimeLine. Um, we learned that the roller works really good. It flattens it down. It gets rid of like some of the creases and stuff that I thought were just problems that were to stay. But man, I think that's really a game changer, to be honest with you. Um, we also uh, used a little piece of cotton to kind of you know, burnish it and to kind of flush out the two, the pieces that kind of meet together, that butt up together. Um, we laid down some gold leaf and, uh, and that was it. Just some of the big takeaways were make sure that your surface is clean and, uh, you know, make sure you, you follow the, uh, the dry times. I mean, when you're mixing up the, the sprayable sizing glue, I did put a little bit of water into it because it is a water-based, which, uh, which definitely helps out and that gets it to lay out smoother. You do light coats, three to four light coats. Um, check it, check the pearl to make sure that it's flashing off to, so you know when you're ready for your next coat or ready for leafing. Um, but, uh, but anyways, yeah, discount code at the, uh, LimeLine website, uh, which is, uh, why am I, big cartel. That'll be down in the description. So you'll be able to get, uh, 20% off time warp one. That's going to be good for at least the next couple of days. Uh, we'll also be doing some more lives, some more giveaways this week. I know that the holidays are coming up, so we're going to be doing a lot of stuff. We're going to be putting some packages together. But uh, thank, thank you guys for being here. Maybe I can answer a couple of questions. Uh, what type of roller did I use earlier? It's basically a roller I found on Amazon. And uh, I'll see if I can link it. I'll, I'll definitely link it down in the description when this is all done tilt towards to see it. Hopefully you guys can see it. Thanks. I got a couple of, uh, got a couple of members here. I appreciate that. If you guys want to sign up for my YouTube membership program, that'll be down there in the link as well. I think it's down there right now, but that's uh, just cause it just, you get a little extra, you get some extra discount codes off of LimeLine and some other stuff like that. Yeah. So Patrick asked if I'm going to airbrush the pinstripes. Is this going to be cleared first? And absolutely yes. This, is, this would go through clear coat and uh, get sanded with 600 grit, and then we would put a, we'd tape it off for an airbrush pinstripe. Nice thing about using an airbrush to pinstripe, which you know I could probably show that 
tomorrow morning. Maybe I'll shoot the, maybe I'll shoot some clear on this and we can see what it looks like. And then tomorrow morning we'll meet back up and we'll airbrush a, a pinstripe on here with some, with some fine line. Maybe we'll do that. But uh, there it is. Like I said, still new at it. I appreciate you guys for being here. Thanks for the support. And I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.